All right, here we are. Welcome, everyone, and a very good evening. We're back here for WRPC Tier 4, where tonight it's time for Round 7 around the Shanghai International Circuit. I'll be your host for tonight. My name is Mitsky, and I'm joined here in the commentary box by Manity. Welcome! Hello, glad to be here again. Second time commentating Tier 4. Yeah, the last time you were here uh, was two weeks ago. It was also the last time I was here. We're in Canada. Had, uh, had a little bit of rain, but was a really interesting race back then, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. We saw a lot of fighting, and it was very interesting. And we're probably going to see that again, knowing how difficult of a track China is. We definitely will. But of course, since last week, a couple of things have happened. So I think it is time to take a quick look at the standing so I can fill you in what happened last time out. Because our championship leader stayed scoreless. Julian 28 didn't pick up any points. And a man in second did come through in fourth place. That is Lucas Beisner, which means they are now shared for the championship lead on 83 points. So it's definitely heating up. But the race went last time out on Imola. Went to Emil Lundell. He picks up 25 points, moves up to 76 points in total. Only seven away from our championship leaders. But them three really are fighting for the title so far. Second place went to Justin Chevalier. Picked up 18 points, now has 20 in total. So picked up a really good amount of points last race. And third place went to Tim Beyer, a reserve driver who picked up his first points of the season, but it was also his first appearance of the season. So it does show that uh, he made a very, very good showing in that uh, one race that he competed in so far. So uh, pretty impressive to see as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is really impressive. And it's very interesting because the standing can always change, obviously, and it's um, they're definitely going to be fighting because everyone wants, of course, as many points as possible. We definitely do, and it looks like we have a few new names in the lobby so far. There'll be 19 drivers tonight. Uh, out of those, Anthony Bourguignon for Ferrari has a quali ban. We also see Akim Lai, Michi Lutinsky, Charles Sutton, Kevin West, Emil Lundell. So those are regulars. Justin Javalier, Giovanni Baruzza, I believe, is a substitute driver. Luke Mills, substitute driver. Uh, Lewis Walker, Tony Itala, Pablo Alcaba, Lucas Beisner, one of the championship competitors. Guti Ballin, substitute driver. I also see Tim Tornemo. Haven't seen him before. He's driving an Alfa Tauri tonight. Um, but as you can hear by the countdown, it looks like we are heading into the game. We're going to have quality that I believe was 26 laps or 28 laps. Do you remember? Uh, no, I'm not sure, actually. All right, well, uh, take a look at that later. But we're first going to go into qualifying here at the Shanghai International Circuit. Um, what can you tell us about the track? Because you've done a little bit of uh, testing earlier on here, right? Yeah, of course. There's a lot of heavy braking zones and fast corners. It's got a really long straight, which, of course, setup is going to matter a lot here because there's also that happen and it's very difficult to get the braking zone correct there so we're definitely going to see some mistakes i believe a lot of invalidations and it's going to be difficult for the drivers just generally it definitely will be but i'm currently having a look for julian 28 and it looks like our championship at least our shared championship leader is not here for tonight which means that lucas beisner uh and Emil Lundell, who should be there, he is indeed there in the Alpine, could do some really good business tonight and put themselves up in the standings uh, a little bit more. So that could be very interesting. It's a shame not, uh, that we don't see him. Julian had already stayed scoreless in the last two races, and it looks like now with an absence here in round seven, that's going to be three races without points in a row. That's, uh, that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, yeah, it is. Everyone's definitely going to be trying for points, and any race without points is, of course, devastating because one single point can make the difference between a position and, of course, that's reputation. It really is, and it looks like the driver so far taking most advantage of that. Uh, no, it is an Alpine, and uh, that must be Emil Lundell, who's the first one out on track. Now, we talked to the drivers a little bit earlier on. They were talking about having personal bests of a 29.7 and 29.9. I'm very curious to see if we're going to see any sub 130s because you were talking about this would be a top 200 uh, lap time in, uh, in the time trials, right? Yeah, anything below 130 is a top 200, which is incredible, of course, that we get those kind of drivers here. 
Well, let's see if we do see those lap times indeed, although I would expect the first run not to come too close to that. But if we have seen qualifying before, we know that Emil Lundell specifically is very, very strong in them, has already picked up a few pole positions this season. So definitely one of the drivers to watch. And if he can outscore, but if he can get a race win here tonight, he's going to level himself up with Lucas Beisner at the very least. Maybe even take over the championship lead. So it could be a very important race for Emil Lundell tonight. Yeah, it could be, really. It's going to be interesting what everyone here can do. And will they get a sub-130? Will they set those impressive lap times? It will be interesting because, of course, they will want to start as near the front of the grid as they can, especially with Shanghai. It's a difficult track, but there are tons of overtaken opportunities, provided you have a good setup on the straights. Yeah, I do need to make sure that the car has enough top speed. In the meantime, we are on board with Emil Lundell as he makes his way to the end of the first sector that he does round off in a 23-6. Jubilee can go a couple tenths quicker when we see a bit of track evolution happening. Now some information about this track. Track's 5.451 kilometers long or 3.387 miles, has 16 corners and is one of the tracks, one of several tracks on the F1 calendar designed by Hermann Tilke. And he's done, he's on quite a few famous tracks, but I think for this one, especially turn one, a very long right-hand sweeper is one of the more iconic corners here and, and definitely the back straight to see him Lundell make a little bit of a mistake at the start of Sector 3. But we're going to see so much slipstreaming down here on the back straight. This is also our first DRS zone. The detection was before turn 12 and here this long back straight is the first zone. And then before turn 16, our final turn, we have our second DRS detection with the second DRS zone on the main straight at all. That mostly really is just to catch up a little bit. We won't see too many overtakes there. We're definitely going to see a lot of DRS chicken happening there just before the hairpin. And yeah, we've seen some incidents happen there in the past before. The real world F1 as well. Um, six years ago, 2018 with Max and Vettel. But we see already Emil Lundell putting up a pretty impressive lap time of a 133. I think we're going to see some sub-130s tonight, won't we? Uh, I believe we will. If... Uh, the first driver out for his first lap can set a 130.3 we're definitely going to see a lot faster lap times but the drivers of course a bit slower but with track evolution there's definitely possibility for sub 130s which are absolutely blistering lap times on this track that is definitely the case and in the meantime uh, we see one of the drivers that currently is talking in chat. I'm not sure if he's going to join last minute as we have Pablo Alcaba take away the fastest lap time. Also, Lucas Beisner coming fairly close with a 130.4. We are currently watching Akim Lai as he makes his way through turn 16, but I believe it was a few tens down on the second server. Should be going for a third. Well, it's at 139, so it's off just a little bit. As we can see, both Anthony Bourguignon and Lewis Walker uh, have retired. That's because they are serving a quali ban. Lewis Walker's quali ban from round 5 carries over as he did not participate last time out. Only three drivers still pushing for a lap. Zergutti Balint, uh, Tim Moreno is invalidated. And our other driver just set a lap time. That was Kryzix. He's put his car up in third. Now watching Guti Ballin come through the final corner and then all of our drivers had their first run with Justin Chevalier and Luke Mills still staying in the pit lane. Yeah, of course, with this track evolution, it's going to be interesting to see what lap times they can get. Who got pole position um, last time we were commentating? I believe it was Emil Lundell who got the pole position. Mm, yeah, and he's already looking pretty close to the front. And that being his first lap, especially out of so many drivers who have gotten um, times way slower, he possibly does have a chance for pole position again. Well, it definitely looks uh, to be the case. He's one of the drivers to watch out for. Pablo Alcaba put a really strong showing just now because he's normally not that far up. Same goes for Kryzix. But we do expect Lucas Beisner to come quite close. And normally Tony Itala can be also quite quick. Although this time he's almost half a second off of the pole lap time. So it's going to be a tough one for him. So I think we'll mostly be watching uh, the people currently in the top five. Although my eyes are mostly peeled uh, on Pablo Alcaba, Milandel and Lucas Beisner. So let's see what they can do in their second run. Looks like Justin Chevalier is about to be underway on uh, his first run. He's currently on an outlap. Mm. 
Yeah, we're probably going to see a lot of drivers who are further back in the standings getting further up in the positions considering this is a difficult track and you need a completely, or well, not completely different, but of course, unique skill set for this, this being an extremely unique circuit. So if you do want to put on a good performance here, you need to have that skill. And some of the drivers near the back may have that skill here that they don't have on other tracks. <coughs> We're currently just checking in to see if we can still get a 30 or 20th driver out there on track because one of our reserve drivers just showed up trying to see if he can still participate. So I'll have to wait and see if our uh, lobby holes can allow that or if it's not going to be possible for him to join. He's currently checking that. Helps when your lobby holes as a quality band and we can sort these things out before the race. So maybe we'll have 20 people on the grid after all. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. It's a lot of people are going out again now, now that um, a lot of, uh, most people have done their first lap. So with this track evolution, it's going to be interesting if this lap, this second lap for most drivers, can get a sub-130 time. Well, we're going to find out about that soon. In the meantime, we see in the chat, Simone Burioni has asked if we can get an onboard with Giovanni Baruzza. Uh, he's currently out for an out lap. He's just started that. So as soon as Justin Chevalier's lap is about done, I think we can go on board with Giovanni Baruzza so we can ca catch his second run. Um, if there's any other driver you'd like us to spectate, please let us know in the chat so we can uh, give them some screen time. Yeah, as um, Justin starts his lap, going to be interested in what he can do. Currently, no time set, so that is his first run. As he has the snap of O's there, I believe that was. Maybe that was intentional for the timing. I'm not too sure. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what time he can set, being his first run on the track evolution as well. And it was a big, big snap, and that's cost him quite a bit. We saw Emil Lundell do a 23.6 here. Justin's mm. currently up for 24.0, so he's already four tenths off. That's going to be a tough one. I think he will complete the lap at least, but I'm not sure if he's going to come anywhere near all the other drivers yeah possibly not but it's good to get a time on there because here you want to do as many runs as you can do because it's extremely easy to get um to get the breaking zone wrong in the first half in it's it's just difficult and you know you want to get as many runs as you can get here and we just got the confirmation that nico viani is allowed to join us so we will have uh, another reserve driver joining in, which means we'll have ter uh, 20 drivers for the race. So I have quite a few reserve drivers tonight, I believe about four or five. Uh, so it's good to see that we have our grid filled once more. And we'll also be finding out what the drivers can make out of that. In the meantime, I believe Giovanni Baruzza is about to start his lap. So let's go on board with him and let's see what he can make out of it. Justin Chevalier is just coming across the line and he's going to put his car in P10 with a 131-0. Yeah, that is a pretty good time. He'll definitely be happy with that, at least for a fast run. <clears throat> so we're now watching Giovanni Burza go to the end of the first sector. He's already a tenth up on his own lap time. That's good, but he completely overshoots at the end of the first sector. And he might have cost a bit of time there. Mill on down in the meantime, he sets the fastest lap. And Bruz is on lap by two tenths. A 131.46. So more drivers are likely going to be eyeing that lap time and we should especially keep an eye out. Well this time it's Tony Itala and looks like Giovanni Baruzza has just gone off the track a little bit. Has not invalidated just yet, but I think he will be down. Yeah, he's down 7.10 so he won't be improving on that lap time. Let's in the meantime move over to Lucas Beisner because he is also in a fast run and he might be one of the drivers that could come close to the current provisional pull time of Tony Itala. Yeah, currently um, one and a half hundredths up on his own time. So a pretty similar lap time, showing his consistency. Now four hundredths up. Um, if he can just keep that through the third sector now, he's going to get a pretty good lap time. And as he has a snap of oversteer, I think that was. Uh, but he is usually a very good driver in qualifying. We've seen him at the front of the grid. And yeah. Yeah, it was a big piece of oversteer, so I don't think he'll be improving much. In the meantime, Maciej Lutinski is coming through the final corner. He's about to cross the line. Does so in P3, definitely improves quite a bit. Pablo Alcaba also on an improvement. He's going to come across the line. 
Uh, at least I think, or he's just about to start a run, not entirely sure. Kryzik's currently also an alt lap. He's about a tenth down. I think Pablo Alcoba, he was either just a little bit quicker, or he's on for a lap now. It's a little bit hard to see. Seeing the yeah. pace that he currently has, he might be on a fast run. No, he's not on a fast run. He's nine tenths down, so he has just done his run. Uh, more and more drivers are coming out. Julian Rachik has aborted. Kevin West still out there. Alberto Barros is currently on a quick run. And he... No, he just improved. So he's not on a quick run. Uh, Kim Lai is on a hot lap. He's currently two tenths up on his own personal best. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. The first three are only separated by not a whole tenth. So there's definitely room for improvement there. And they will constantly be fighting definitely as many runs as they can get because of course even with this track being so difficult you can always find time somewhere yeah it looks like <laughs> quite a few drivers have been able to do so i'm most impressed though with tony hitala from his first run to his second run improved by over six tens that's a massive leap that he took and so far it's enough to have provisional pull we're currently on board with tim tornemo who has also been validated in the second run so we'll have to come back into the pits and prepare for his third and final run. Most drivers currently in the pits, uh, waiting to get their cars out and to prepare themselves for a third and final run. If there's anyone you'd like us to watch, let us know. Otherwise, we will go on board with uh, one of the drivers currently in the top three or our um, championship leader, Lucas Beisner, currently is in P6. It looks like Nico Viani has managed to join us in the meantime, so he will have enough time to go for one run. Currently 4 minutes 20 seconds left on the clock, that was not intended, and we will see what the drivers can do for their third and final runs in a bit. Yeah, it's good to see Maciej Lutinski finally getting a good lap time, typically you see him being pretty unlucky, usually being involved in incidents. Previously in um, uh, our last session that we commentated, he, um, he was very unlucky in qualifying, got qualifying blocked, and he does complain about having bad luck almost every week. So it is good to see him up there, especially if he does not improve on his lap time. He still has a good starting position one way or another, so that is good to see. What looks like in the meantime, some drivers are coming out of the pit box. These are getting ready. We have our 20th driver now. Yeah, we do indeed have Nico Viani who's just joined it. Everyone is still in the pits. Two drivers, of course, not participating due to a quality ban. Still stays a bit quiet in the pit boxes. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they can do during the race, what kind of strategy they can get on this track to try work up the positions, at least get a few points, which could always be possible. I already yeah, heard in the, the chat that Guti Balland has done his personal best, so he's already had a pretty good quality run, currently finds himself in P10, and the first driver out for his third and final run is Kryzix, currently in P5, as more and more drivers make their way out, Kilian Rachik's out there, followed behind him Giovanni Baruzza, then we have um, a Zauber, which must be Luke Mills, and then we also have Mercedes, so Giovanni Lanzoni is out, more and more drivers are starting to leave the pits. Also, Milundel, Pablo Alcaba. So we'll be switching over to them in a bit. Uh, but first, we're going to stay on board with Kryzix. Um Manady, who do you think is going to take pole position tonight? Uh, I think, honestly, with the front only being separated by hundreds, it's, you can only guess because there's no definite answer to this. But I believe Emil has a very good chance. He set the first lap which put him into provisional pole um and it was a very good lap time if he improves here he has a very good chance as he is a good qualifier and you know but at the same time tony pablo lucas are all strong contenders for pole position so you really can't tell it will indeed be very hard to tell, and I think Emil Lundell definitely is one of the drivers to watch. I think Lucas Beisner will also go for a decent improvement, about two, two and a half tens that he can still improve on. But I think we're going to see a quicker lap time, but whether that's going to be a 30-0 or we're going to go into sub-130s, we will have to find out. In the meantime, the, the grid is stacking up behind Kryzix, and a couple of drivers have overtaken him. It looks like Luke Mills is the first one out there, and now the first one in the queue also, Kilian Rachig. Has gone for an overtake. I think he's been taken back though by Kryzik. So the drivers are currently filling in their slots. 
few drivers still staying in the pits, including Nico Viani, so I think he's just working on a setup rather than going for a lap. He also mentioned in the chat that he'd rather start at the back of the grids, but he will probably start in 18th due to those quality fans already being applied. But here we go, Luke Mills is on for his hot lap. These are his final qualifying runs, and this is where you have to make it count. If you put it on pole now, you'll be there at the end if you miss out now, and that's it. Yeah, final run for most of these drivers. Uh, Nico not coming out. Um, and so now almost all the drivers are on their lap now, some on an out lap. So the starting grid could completely change. Some drivers out the back could go to the front. With this track, of course, you never know. But I definitely think the front would stay similar, but it's just a matter of luck now. Well, not luck, of course, but it is going to be very tight at the front to see who can get pole position and, you know, start on the first few rows. It definitely will, and so far Luke Mills is up one-tenth on his lap time, but that does not seem enough to come close to that pole position. And behind him, Kryzik seems to be on for a pretty fast run. He's about half a tenth up as the flag is now out. So we're going to stay on board with Kryzik. Currently his improvement is enough to improve his own time, but not enough to improve a position. We'll have to double that gain in order to come close to at least a P4, and then there's still quite a while to go. We'll have to improve by two and a half tenths, two more tenths in the final sector. If he wants to put that car on pole, he still has one more corner to go. Now comes through turn 16, won't get much of a slipstream. Luke Mills has come through, he's in P11. Kryzix does improve, but does not improve his spot. Lucas Beisner currently not on quicker, but Pablo Alcoba is faster in his own lap time. Uh, yeah, Emil currently almost a tenth upon his own lap, and Tony about uh, uh, almost a tenth upon his own lap. As Pablo says, the fastest lap time is Emil now sets a sub 130. That will be definitely very difficult to beat. Um, can the other drivers do it? I don't think so. No, it doesn't look like it because Tony Itala has is already a bit down. Much Lutinsky seems to have aborted Kevin West is still on a lap, was already a little bit slower, does improve just a little bit onto 10th, so it's just Akim Lai who's on for a lap, but he's only about a 10th quicker, and it looks like there's only one driver that can go into the sub-130s. He is going to take pole position tonight, and it is now confirmed. Pole position goes out to Emil Londell with a 129.986. Second goal to Pablo Alcaba. Tony Itala does fight back, but we don't see our championship uh, competitors being too far up. It's only Emil Lundell, of course, who is currently in P3, but our championship leader, Lucas Beisner, quite down the order a little bit. Uh, yeah, so I didn't think anyone would set a sub-130. It is it's a blistering lap time on this track, and you have to take a lot of risks to do that. And I did not believe any driver would want to risk that, especially on their final run. Didn't want to invalidate or something like that. But in the end, Emil did it, and... And he has pole position by quite a significant margin, over one tenth. And the grid is usually a bit less separated than that. So that is great to see. Just great driving. Yeah, it is a pretty solid lap time indeed. As we look at the bottom, of course, three drivers without a lap time. But the one that I'm most curious about is our championship leader, Lucas Beisner, starting in P9 at 130.401. He was able to do a thousand slower than the man in P8. So we'll have to start this race uh, from pretty much the middle of the field. But I don't think we've seen any penalties come in, have we? So I think we can go straight on to a race. Yeah, I don't think a restart is needed. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it will be very quick and easy. Yeah, it sounds like uh, our host, Anthony Bourguignon, and also Kylian Racek have confirmed this now. So that means we're going to go on straight to the race. Now, what you guys need to know, I already told you, there are two DRS zones, just to repeat once more, detection. First detection zone before turn 12, so just before the long back straight, with the zone on the long back straight, and the final detection is just before the final corner, turn 16, with the zone, the second DRS zone, on the start-finish straight. And there's a pit lane time loss of approximately 17.2 seconds, so that's about average. Although we will likely only see a one-stopper unless, of course, safety cars are going to come out. Now, safety cars are not too uncommon. Um, but then again, the drivers have been able to keep it fairly clean throughout the last couple of races. So I'm not sure if we could expect a safety car. What do you think, uh, Manity? Uh, honestly, on this track, um, the main overtaking action will definitely happen on the straights. 
Of course, it does depend on the setup, but the two long straights that will definitely show some a lot of overtaking. But of course, even anywhere on the track, it will happen. And I think some people will take risks, and I believe there could be an incident. Maybe not safety car worthy. Maybe it could be. You never know. We'll have to see. But I do believe it is possible, as this track is quite difficult um, in some aspects, of course. And, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what this race will have in store for us. You know, if we currently look at the clouds, it seems to be dry. There seems, even though it's a little bit cloudy, there seems to be no sign of rain. So we should have a dry race all the way throughout. Looks like none of the drivers are having any issues, at least so far reported. So we should be able to go straight on to the race as soon as we're being moved over to the grid. 20 drivers on the grid, three drivers that did not set a lap time, two to the quality ban, and one driver that joined in later. But we have a full grid, a couple of reserve drivers, and pole position for the man currently third in the championship. Although, if he manages to win the race tonight, he will take over that championship lead. So quite an important race for Emil Landell. With today's race included, four races to go until the championship is fully decided. So, a lot to fight for, uh, but tonight could be an interesting one as we see the lights come on with three, four, and five red lights. And we are on our way with a good start in the inside for Pablo Alcaba. Immediately going to be challenging Emil Lundell for that into turn one. Let's go on board with Pablo Alcaba. And looks like he has taken the lead on the inside, it's taking a shorter line. Emil Lundell does try to stay on the outside. Which is where you want to be, but the overtake has already happened. And it's Pablo Alcoba that takes the race lead after a blistering start. Yeah, yeah, that is incredible. As we see Luke Mills spin, and he is now at the back. <clears throat> that definitely will not be good for him. A definitely. very bad start. He will definitely hope for some sort of incident. He definitely will, but look at Giovanni Lanzoni go. He's one of the few drivers that chosen that's opted for the soft compounds. He started in P6. He's already at the race lead. He's managed to take three drivers in the first turn. Then it was another driver just before the end of the first sector. Did have a little bit of a tap with Pablo Alcoba, but that didn't cause in any incidents. And now he's trying to see if he can drive away. Already pushed that gap to five tens. I think he'll be using quite a bit of ERS to move outside of the DRS range, which of course is going to be activated in lap three. Now have a, let's have a little bit of look on the tires. Uh, here we have our tires. Pretty much everyone on the same strategy. <laughs> Giovanni Lanzoni is the only driver on softs. Anthony Bergignol is the only driver on the mediums. All the other 18 drivers are currently on the hard. So it looks like we know what the preferred strategy is, don't we? Yeah, it's clear as we now start our first full racing lap. Um, Giovanni having gone up five positions, but of course with those soft tyres and the very difficult turns, that is a given, as the whole grid is for now closely packed. Very bad start for Luke Mills, and with this strategy it is going to be interesting, because we will see if the popular strategy is actually be the best strategy, if Giovanni getting in those five positions at the start, starting with soft tyres, will it be worth it? Well, if he can finish the race here on a one-stopper, it could definitely be worth it. So far, it seems to have paid off because he's been able to move his car to the top of the grid. Has not been able to break toe with Emil Amdell. So it looks like he does not have the pace at least to move the car outside of the DRS window. Although he's starting to improve a little bit and gaining a little bit of time in this second sector. But I don't think Emil Amdell is going to let him get away. Another driver has had a very impressive start is Lewis Walker. He started in P20. He's up seven positions. And he's on the same compound as all the other drivers. And he's starting to get close to the drivers in P11 and 12 who are having a little bit of a fight of their own. And it looks like Lewis has just decided to come through in the middle. Has gone past Charles Sutton. Maybe he can get a good slipstream down here. Now he will first need to let the other drivers by before he can take the slipstream himself. So he's been demoted back to P13 momentarily, but Charles and Kevin up ahead having a pretty good fight with one another. And Lewis is going to hope that when the driver shoots and uh, overshoots a little bit, that does not happen. So Lewis stays in P13 for now, but quite a few drivers are close. The drivers closest to one another, definitely up ahead. Charles Sutton, Kevin West having a fight for P11. Yeah, as Emil sets the fastest lap on that hard tire, he definitely will be trying to get Giovanni. Even on that hard tyre, is his pace going to be good enough to catch him with those soft tyres? 
there will definitely be a good amount of questions whether uh, well there's definitely going to be a lot of variation in ERS and that's going to make a big difference even with the tire change um Emil still has a chance clearly setting that fastest lap until unless Giovanni can obviously prove that he is still capable uh, Emil set uh, setting the Emil having pole position that's of course a pretty good advantage for pace it definitely is, but now the main question is going to be what is he going to do in the DRS zone? So let's quickly move over to Emil Landau. Mostly we see the driver slipstream a little bit in the back, not trying to overtake too much. But if Emil has too much overspeed, he's definitely going to try overtake Giovanni and go and set the pace of his own unless he wants to just linger around in the back hoping that Pablo Alcaba doesn't overtake him. Let's go on board with Emil. He has a DRS activated. Will he try and go for the move? Or does he decide against it? He decides against it. Does get very close to the back of that Mercedes. They seem to be being ghosted out momentarily as well as a result of it. The driver so far not trying to overtake. Lewis Walker has gone back into Charles Sutton once more. So he's back into P12. But up ahead, the grit still remains unchanged. Although the second DRS zone has now been activated around the outside. Emil Lundell is trying to have a little cheeky look. But he's still staying behind Giovanni Lanzoni for a time being. But I think in about a lap or two, he's going to try and overtake him and retake the race lead. Yeah, drivers with imp impressive starts, who of course have Giovanni going up five positions as Akim um, is out of the race. Um, Nico in P16, our last minute driver, having gone up three places. Lewis Walker qualifying ban up eight places now. Uh, Charles getting a good start, two places up. And uh, yeah, that is pretty impressive as Luke is still at the back trying to make up that time. But of course, on that hard tyre, when everyone else is on, uh, almost everyone else is on the same strategy, that will be difficult for him to catch up. And all he can hope for is an incident. It really is pretty much all he can hope for. So far, the drivers have gone with the offset strategy. There were only two. Giovanni Lanzoni's strategy seems to have worked quite well as he's currently leading the race. For Anthony Bourguignon, starting on the mediums means that he has kept his P18 for the time being. It's still within DRS range. We have a DRS train of 18 drivers. One driver currently out of the race, retired in the pit lane as Emil Lundell retakes the race lead from Giovanni Lanzoni. And the only driver not in the DRS train, Luke Mills. I think that's because of an incident early on in the race as now Lewis Walker is trying to get past Kevin West and he's really been getting overtake after overtake after overtake we should keep a close eye on him as now so Tim Tornemo has gotten past Charles Sutton so Tim finds himself in P13 his teammate currently in P11 we definitely should keep a good uh, look out for Lewis as we also see Lucas Beisner is currently falling outside of the DRS train up ahead with Justin Chevalier and Kryzix and Maciej Lutinski currently fighting for P5 yeah, it's going to be a game of cat and mouse at the front between Giovanni and Emil and down the lead. It's constantly going to change hands with uh, Giovanni and Emil until the soft tyres die. Because with that DRS and Emil's pace, there is not much you can do, even with the tyre difference. <clears throat> there really is not much that you can do indeed. But because of all this fighting, Kryzix has uh, gotten past Maciej Lutinski. But he just momentarily moved out of DRS range, has now... Almost gone back at it, Maciej Lutinski has fallen out of DRS range instead, which means that Lukas Beisner has gone back into the zone again, which is good news for him. I think Kryzix just managed to get within the zone, use a little bit of ERS for that, so be able to keep the gap to Tony Hitala close. On the other hand, Maciej Lutinski is now going to be very vulnerable from overtake from Justin Chevalier, and Justin's already alongside him on the start-finish straight. Now he's going to get DRS. And with that, DRS will be on the inside. Is going to overtake him. But look at that. Two man. He's going to take all at once. It's Lucas Beisner with a double overtake on the start finish straight now. So make sure he keeps it tight because three drivers, they're super close to one another. As Giovanni Baruzza picks up a time penalty round the outside. The. No, it's Maciej Lutinski actually who came into the pits. Maciej Lutinski is coming to the pits. So maybe there was a little bit of contact there. But Lucas Beisner gaining two positions there. A big, big move from him. As we have a yellow in sector one. Uh, Giovanni has spun. He's off. Uh, now he is coming back. But that is 
definitely very devastating for him on that soft tire having the lead of the race before he just got pushed so hard by Emil and Pablo uh, he got track limits violations got a penalty for that and then of course from the stress or from the pressure he just won it is unfortunate to see yeah, it's very unfortunate to see that pretty much ruins his strategy for the race was doing so well at the race start but now really has been thrown out of contention. In the meantime, Lewis Walker finds himself in P9. He's getting very close to Alberto Barros up ahead. He's now going to be struggling a little bit more with all the drivers up ahead of him having that DRS. Uh, Lucas Beisner is currently 2.8 seconds away from Kryzix in P4. He does find himself in P5, but now is going to be overtaken by Justin Chevalier. And if he doesn't watch out, Kilian Racek is also going to try and mount an overtake on the both of them. And here we go, down the main straight. He's having a look down the inside. Another man trying to go with him. There's contact! There's contact! And it looks like a front wing end plate for Kilian Racek has been lost. This does cost Lucas Beiser a little bit of time, but I think Kilian might be coming into the pits very soon. Although I'm not sure if he's realized just that Lucas will likely try and go for the re-overtake. Has already gone past him around the outside. It looks like Killian's trying to pull away a little bit. As we have another yellow in Sector 3. That is once again Giovanni Lanzoni. He has spun out there. It means that Luke Mills is caught up with him. But it's starting to go from bad to worse for Giovanni. He has to watch out now. It doesn't make any contact with Luke Mills. We'll try and stay on the outside of him but has been pushed back all the way to P18. Not the race that Giovanni was hoping for, unfortunately. Yeah, Emma leading with 100% ERS almost. And with DRS, that just shows his pace and his defense against Pablo, definitely pressuring him to do something. And of course, a big disappointment for some of the drivers is Nico, um, our last minute driver, going into p11 also a very impressive start from lewis starting from p20 now in p8 on the most popular tire strategy so that is looking very promising for him now unfortunately giovanni has joined luke mills at the back and he's definitely lost his pace that he had with the soft tire as um luke overtakes him as we have a yellow as that's lucas bison oh no <laughs> that's our championship leader that's our championship leader who's made a mistake and now finds himself in P16. That's disastrous for Lucas Beisner. He was just in P6, but might have had a little bit of contact with either Justin Chevalier or about to Barrows. Of course, we didn't manage to catch that. Did you catch what happened, Manini? No, I didn't catch what happened either, but that will be devastating as he only has a seven-point gap to Emil and his hopes of keeping his lead now are almost zero. It does if seem... takes the win and he stays at the back, all he needs is seven points to take take it away from him, Emil does. Yeah, this could be a monstrous weekend for Emil Lundell if he managed to keep his car where it is only his teammate, uh, Pablo Alcabas. So Lucas' his teammate, Pablo, could be helping him a little bit, making sure that he uh, slips away at least seven points from Emil Lundell. But so far it doesn't like he can be contested much, although Pablo is starting to inch closer and closer to that race lead. So likely will be staying behind for a time being, maybe with the uh, pit stops trying an offset strategy when the drivers are going to move over to the mediums. But aside from that, it's going to be a tough, tough race to try and beat the mill on down. Yeah, without a safety car, this could be a disastrous weekend for Lucas Beisner. He's currently 2.4 seconds away from Guti Ballon in P14. But will need to close that gap as quickly as possible. Because if he stays out of it, he will need to try an offset strategy. And that could hurt him later on in the race. Yeah, and we'll show him just how good his pace is at almost 100% ERS. Keeping Pablo with DRS behind. Him having only 65% ERS. So clearly that pole position and that pace is just a massive advantage to Emil. Being able to hold off anyone behind him. He definitely doesn't even... Well, he of course, but he has a, a good chance of taking the race win, which will of course be devastating for Lucas. And unless so, something goes his way, such as a lucky safety car, um, he doesn't have hope for keeping his lead. That doesn't seem to be the case now indeed, and as it stands now, because the DRS train had been interrupted earlier on, it means that realistically the drivers currently in the top four will be fighting for the race win. That will be Emil Lundell, Pablo Alcoba, Tony Itala and Kryzix. So we once again have a yellow in sector one. That 
I think it's Luke Mills, although I'm not 100% sure. I think it was, mm. yeah, Luke Mills. Yeah, I think so. So Luke Mills has dropped back towards P17, finds himself at a place where he started, as we're still on board with Alberto Barros, because his fight, together with Lewis Walker, Justin Chevalier, Kevin West, and many, many more in that second DRS train is getting quite heated. But look at Lewis Walker. Started in P20, up 14 positions after 9 laps in P6 so far. But also Nick Viani, a reserve driver, a last minute reserve driver. Currently finding himself in a point finish, potential point finish in top 10. Um, well, currently 10th indeed in that Haas. And only about 2.5 tenths away from the driver up ahead, Tim Tornamo. Uh, who's also coming in as a reserve tonight. Looks like Lewis Walker is getting one more. He's gone past Justin Chevalier. Now finds himself in P5. We have once again a yellow in Sector 3. That is once again the Mercedes of Giovanni Lanzoni. And I think it's time for Giovanni to enter the pits. As Lewis goes wide. Lewis goes very wide on the final corner. And this could open up an opportunity for Justin Chevalier to come by on the inside. But looks like he's holding off for the time being. And he'll want to retake that fifth place on the long back straight yeah as pablo just cannot keep up with ammo as nico are fighting with tim uh tim ends up keeping that p9 but nico definitely will be pleased that he came in this race last minute they will be fighting very closely now clearly nico going up so many places as uh that's killian that gets the fastest lap of the race on the medium tile yeah, Killian going for a very early pit stop. Uh, not sure why exactly that was the case. The same happened for Maciej Lutinski, uh, which means that uh, Killian is indeed able to go a little bit quicker. If we look at the tires, Maciej Lutinski has also stopped for the mediums. Killian has been there on those tires for two laps, at least for the time being. Up ahead, the drivers still remain on the same ones. And it's starting to look like up ahead... The pack is trying, starting to come together a little bit more, although no overtakes are yet to be made. I think Pablo Alcaba is still holding off just a little bit. But let's see if Charles Sutton is going to be able to come back onto Nico Viani. We haven't seen too much of him yet so far this race. He's having a little bit of a look down the inside, but decides against it as Alberto Barros has gotten the overtake done onto Justin Chevalier. But it looks like Lewis is able to keep his position and is also able to keep that gap steady towards Kryzix, despite Kryzix having two DRS zones around this track. So pretty impressive stuff by uh, Lewis, as we see Lucas Bison, our championship leader, going into the pit lane, going for quite an early pit stop, likely switching to the mediums. Yeah, it's definitely very unfortunate for him. But, of course, Lewis Walker has made up 15 positions, starting from P20, now in P5. Maybe he will be contending for the podium. As um, Lucas Bison now, if oh, as Giovanni gets a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane, as we get a caution, um, what was that, Byron? Um, Giovanni that? has DNF this car in the pit lane, that oh. is the result. Oh, yeah, well, Lewis showing it's possible going up 15 positions on the same strategy as almost everybody else. Lucas could do the same thing, you never know, of course, but he will have to if he wants to keep his, um, position in the standings uh, yeah yeah that is true although realistically with the gap that has already emerged he does need a drs uh, uh or a drs a safety car in order to pablo get back at it in and race. indeed pablo has taken the lead in the race and Milan Dell's overshot a little bit in the hairpin and round the outside comes tony hitala He's now retaken a uh, position two from Emil Landell. So Emil losing two positions there in just about one corner. But it looks like he is not going to give up on that too easily. Is going to slot in just behind Tony Tal. Let's see if Emil can already have a cheeky look down the inside or outside to try and catch the Salvo driver off guard. But for a time being, he's just sticking behind. And also Kryzix not really showing too much uh, of his tires just yet. But that might help him on later on during the race if he can extend his stint just a little bit longer and stay within range and try and make the drivers currently in the top three a little bit difficult as they fight for the race win. We're currently in lap 12 out of 28, so we're almost half race distance. 
Yeah, and we'll definitely not give that up. His pace being pretty good. One mistake, though, and he loses two positions, which is unfortunate for him. Starting from Parlin on the same strategy, um, I believe. And so he will be fighting hard for that, and he probably will be able to, but it will be interesting to see the battle for the top four who are in a DRS strand. Yeah, and it looks like Emil Lundell's already getting There's really Nico. close. Goes yeah, side by side with Tim, and um, he goes around the outside and keeps it. And Nico goes up into ninth place after quite a bit of fighting with Tim. Now he's going to oh, but they are side by side. Tim having DRS. Never mind. Maybe. Um, sorry. And yeah, he get, takes a look down the inside, but doesn't make it. So, a lot of fighting as um, Giovanni now goes down into P13. Uh, that is uh, two places down, back to the position he started in. <clears throat> and that was a tough, tough uh, start for Oral. Back straight for Nico Viani. He did manage to overtake uh, Charles Sutton and Tim Tornemo for P9. But as a result, because they overtook them just a little bit too early... He did not get the DRS long the back straight. Lost two positions on the back straight. Almost lost two more against Giovanni Baruzza and Guti Ballant. With a good exit out of the hairpin. Did keep his P11 for the time being. But yeah, that is the fight that we're going to see for P9. Because another DRS train has emerged. So realistically, we have three DRS trains. We have one for the top five. Uh, top four, sorry. Then fifth on to eighth is our second DRS train. So another four drivers. And then from P9 all the way down to P14, our third and final DRS train. So those drivers keeping each other in line. Although the second and the third DRS train might be able to merge after the first set of pit stops. As that gap is not too big, the gap to top four already 6.3 seconds. And that might be a bit much to overcome as Tony Hitala takes over the race lead from Pablo Alcaba. With Emil Landel starting to close in once more. Yeah, going back to Giovanni uh, with his time penalty, actually, um, he has a significant, a significant amount less ERS than the people around him, so that will be hard for him to fight. He is uh, on the verge of having less than 10% ERS, which will make his, the performance of the car a lot worse. As Charles Sutton, Tim and Giovanni go into the pit lane, have a little bit of contact, I believe. <coughs> so... Um. And they have switched yeah. to the mediums, at least Charles Sutton has switched to them. Giovanni Baruzza, Tim Tornemo's done the same, and the positions at least stay the same for a time being, although it looks like Tim has gotten a little bit closer. It looked like they had a little bit of contact heading into the pit lane as Charles seemed to have overshot a little bit. They do come out on track just behind Lucas Beisner, so that's good news for Lucas, at least for now. Of course, he's going to be struggling more towards the end of the race, being on three lap hold mediums, as with the other drivers that just stopped are on a fresh set of mediums. Now, we're currently half race distance. I think more drivers are starting to uh, peel into the pits in the laps to come. And I think we should be keeping an eye out for the top three, the top four, really, to see if they are going to be coming in. Because I would not be surprised if a driver like Tony Tala is going to decide, you know what, I'm going to head into the pits. We're now going to make our way onto the mediums as the drivers have a little bit of a tap with one another. Let's hope that did not cause any damage. Yeah, maybe Van Pitten will slightly break up the DRS trends. And of course, on this track, there are two long DRS zones, which even if you're a very skilled driver in the corners, it, it, it can just, um, you know, it makes a big difference um, with DRS. Someone could have a, of course, le um, less drag set up and be faster than you on the straights and still get the overtake, even if you're much better. As uh, quite a few people go into the pits, that's Krylix, um, Lewis, Alberto, Kevin and Nico. Yeah, so quite a few drivers have come into the pit lane. They're now exiting the pit lane as well. It looks like Krylix is going to keep He's a significant lead over the other drivers. It has just come out behind Maciej Lutinski. Let's go on board with Kryzix. 
and see how quickly he can dispatch Maciej Lutinski, who is on nine lap old mediums. Of course, Maciej has already taken a pit stop as well, has fulfilled the tire regulations, but will be very tough for him to make it to the end of the race on those mediums. Although, if we get a safety car roundabout now, it could be very good news for Maciej, as it means he will be fighting for a potential, um, well, potential top five finish later on. Lewis Walker, Alberto Barros, Kevin West have managed to stay ahead of Lucas Beisner. Although Lucas Beisner has come out within the RS ranges of Melondel has overtaken both Tony Itala and Pablo Alcaba. So we should be keeping an eye on that and see if they're going to be coming into the pits. But so far, at least strategy-wise, Lucas Beisner has put himself back into contention. It's Pablo Alcaba and Tony Itala are now going to make their pit stop and will likely come out just behind Machi Lutinski and out in P7 and 8. Yeah, Emil we'll now will definitely be push be pushing quite hard using quite a lot of VRS, I believe, because he will not want to get undercut uh, by those drivers he was just battling with, and he will want to set uh, the fastest lap time he can because, of course, it will be difficult, or he might have to fight them again in another DRS train later. Now that there will be a tire gap, the fights will become a lot more tire based and grip based rather than just skill and pace based. It looks like Pablo Alcaba has made a really good pit stop because he's managed to stay ahead of Machi Dotinsky. Tony Hitala, on the other hand, has come out just behind him, although will likely dispatch him as soon as possible. Pablo Alcaba, 1.4 seconds away now, 1.2 it is now, uh, to Kryzik, so we'll need to close that gap to try and make it difficult for him. Emil Lundell likely to come in at the end of this lap and head into the pit stand for Anthony Bourguignon. We'll have to see if he's going to extend his stints on the mediums and perhaps even go for the softs later on. That could help him out a little bit, although when he is going to make his pit stop, he will be rejoining the grid at P17, uh, substantially behind Guti Ballin. So we'll need an offset strategy to try and make that work. And further up ahead then, Emil Lundell, is he going to go into the pits? He will indeed. Let's see if he does not overshoot. Quite a few drivers did overshoot in the pit entry. Emil does not do so. And with him now in the pit, we'll have to see in relation to Kryzix where he's going to come out. Because Kryzix currently at the hairpin as we see Tony Hitala get the overtake down onto Machin Lutinski. But the gaps have started to increase a little bit. So it'll be more and more tough for Kryzix, Pablo and Tony to stay within the arrest range. Although we now watch Kryzix come across the line, set the fastest lap time. And he'll be coming out ahead of Emil. So he's currently our new race leader. Yeah, Lewis Walker being very impressive now. He sets the fastest lap of the race. Um, he is currently in P6, and that will be his, um, of course. So he does not need to stop anymore. He is on two lap old mediums. He will definitely hold those to the end. Um, it will definitely be interesting to see if he can contend for a podium position. As um, don't know what that yellow was caused by. Lewis Walker goes up into P5. Uh, but of course, inevitable with that tire difference between him and Maciej. Uh, Guti Ballant going up into P15. A pat and Kryzik's just having broken the DRS with Pablo, but I think he might still have it. Yeah, it's going to be very close here as they come across. I think Pablo has managed to get within DRS range, so that's good news for him. I think the yellow flag that we saw earlier on was for Lucas Beisner because we now find him, in, uh, find him in P16 when earlier on I believe he was further up the grid. Uh, if we look at Pablo Alcaba, I'm not sure if he had the DRS but I think he did because that gap is now only 4 tenths and Milondale behind, currently not within the DRS range. Tony Itala is trying to get a little bit closer. But the big winner of this pit stop sequence really is Lewis Walker. That gap up ahead was over 6 seconds. The gap now to the top 4 only two so if he can start to improve a little bit more as Maciej Lutinski comes in for his second pit stop and we're seeing another yellow that is a Haas driver I believe who's gone a little bit wide that is that Kilian is... Rocek yeah that would be unfortunate for him he was in a points position I believe um so he was driving a very good race do we know what happened there no I'm not entirely sure what's happened to him we do see 
And uh, Lucas Beisner going a little bit too wide again the first turn, uh, which means that Kilian Rodzic and Anthony Bergignon have gone past. Anthony's gap actually to drivers up ahead is not that much, so if he can keep good pace on those softs, he might be able to put himself into a point finish where his teammate Justin Chevalier currently is with a provisional P10. Kryzix's gap to Pablo Alcaba has shrunk, so I think Pablo will be looking for an overtake in a moment's notice. And also Milan Dell and Tony Hital have managed to get back within the RS range and have broken that one second gap. Lewis Walker still staying outside of that. But he's currently driving a little bit of no man's land. 2.2 seconds up ahead, 3 seconds behind him. Seems quite safe for him as Pablo Alcaba has now retaken the race lead. But the fight really going between the top four now. Pablo Alcaba, Kryzix, Emil Lundell, and Tony Hitala. Yeah, Emil, now that Kryzix got overtaken and thrown off, he will definitely try to take advantage of that. On those two lap newer mediums, obviously not a massive difference, is he does set the fast lap of the race the race now his pace being shown as he does go around the outside and um Kryzix is forced to back off emil goes into p2 he will now be fighting for p1 with those slightly fresh tires he will have that edge ever so slightly so and with his pace it will be to his advantage as lucas beisner is out of the race um Giovanni as well, Giovanni Baruzza. Both of Giovanni's out, Kylian Racek into the pits. I'm not sure if he's going to stay in or what he's going to do, but he has switched for the mediums. It looks like he is continuing. But quite a few drivers have uh, DNF, yeah, championship leader as well. That's only great news for Emil Lundell. He's going to take over the championship lead as it stands and could perhaps make that gap a little bit bigger if he can also dispatch Pablo Alcaba currently in P1. Yeah, do we know what happened with uh, Lucas and Giovanni, or did they just retire? Well, Giovanni had picked up a penalty, I'm not entirely sure why he did, but yeah, for Lucas Beisner, made, of course, a mistake in the first session. Now, in the after the first set of uh, pit stops, made two more mistakes as well. So I think Emil. after that, I just decided, yeah, this is, uh, this is not my night. Yeah, Emma with DRS has just overtaken Pablo Arcabar going into the lead of the race. And earlier, their battle was Emil managing to hold Pablo off without using any ERS, even with Pablo having DRS. Um, it will definitely be a not-so-close fight, I believe. I think Emil can take this home if he doesn't make any mistakes, significant mistakes. That definitely could be the case, as we saw Justin Chevalier and Nico Viani fight for P10 momentarily. Justin not having a great exit out of the hairpin but still keeps uh the position over nickel for time being although his gap up front has now increased to 1.7 seconds tim tornamo it's gotten quite close to charles sutton so them two will be fighting i believe there was an overtake momentarily at least the last lap lap 19 down the back straight but yeah a couple of fights are starting to get interesting a lot of uh, tussling happening now so the fight for top four very interesting we have a fight for P6 between Kevin West and Alberto Barros. We have a fight for P8, Charles Sutton, Tim uh, Tornemo. And then we have a fight for T P10 with Nico Viani and Guti Ballin, two of the reserve drivers fighting it out with the Ferrari drivers. So a couple of fights really interesting. We're going to see who is uh, going to get the short end of the stick and who is going to be uh, going home with the prize, which is the most points. Uh, but definitely up ahead, the most interesting fight. Four drivers still in contention for a race winning. Yeah, so we've seen some very close racing, and we have seen quite a bit of contact. But in the end, it has been clean. So, um, opposing my statement from the start of the race, I don't think we will see any safety cars or big incidents anymore with seven laps left. What do you think? No, I think it's going to be a safety carless race. Uh, of course, the safety car can't come out anymore when there's just a few laps remaining on the board. We have eight laps to go, so it is still possible, but it will have to happen quite quickly as Charles Sutton gets back on Tim Tornemo, who had gotten the overtake done on the start-finish straight. Now he's going to try and see if he can have a cheeky look down the outside, just like we saw Emil Lundell done, uh, uh, do earlier on Kryzix. But looks like he does not have the exit or the tires uh, advantage, at least, to do the same onto Charles Sutton. So he will have to try and go for it again 
on the back straight. Kilian Rachek sets the fastest lap time, but I think that is about the most that he can do tonight. Very curious to see if Anthony Bourguignon can go quicker on those softs because he needs to close a 3.2 second gap to Guti Balland to still be fighting for a points finish here. But if he manages to do so, the fight for P8 has now been moved all the way down to P12. So five drivers fighting for P8, which means five drivers and three of them are going to get points. So that fight in the midfield is going to be pretty interesting. But we're now going to quickly look at Alberto Barros, who's starting to close in to Kevin West on P6. Yeah, as he now has DRS, but from that distance, I don't think he will go for it. Just getting really up close to him, ready for the next DRS straight, which he maybe will be able to overtake. Um, looking back at Tim and Charles really quickly, Tim does happen to be struggling with ERS quite a bit, uh, flashing, so it will stunt his performance a little bit, make his pace a bit slower. As Alberto is just on the back of Kevin um, and now without ERS will he be able to hold it um, Kevin having less ERS than him so if Alberto can match his pace he definitely will be able to make an overtake and come up into P6 Yeah I think Alberto also realizes that the driver up ahead and the driver behind him they find themselves in a little bit of a no man's land so he can wait it out a little bit make sure he saves enough ERS Go for an overtake in the final lap and then uh, secure a P6 for the race here tonight. I think up ahead the top four is starting to do a little bit of a similar thing for Charles Sutton because there's more drivers fighting for that P8. We might see some more fights already happening earlier on. So, so far we're keeping our eyes locked in on those drivers. And I'll quickly zoom in onto Nico Fiani who seemed to gotten closer to Justin Chevalier in P10. It's going to be very hard for him to make overtakes with all the drivers ahead having a DRS activated for them after this corner. We're definitely going to see some more overtakes in the late top eights. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And Anthony Bourguignon is also starting to get just a little bit closer. But by the looks of it, it's not enough to uh, be able to get within DRS range later on. Yeah, Nico with similar ties to everyone else. Starting from almost the back. Uh, being a last minute driver of course he does if he takes that one point home even from p10 that will be quite impressive to see <clears throat> that will be very impressive to see indeed but we can definitely say the same about lewis walker who started in p20 after that quali ban finds himself in p5 will likely finish there as well in the meantime, we see Tony Hitala has fallen outside the RS range, so it looks like he has uh, conceded on the fight for the race win here tonight. So the fight for the race win and also for the podium positions will be between Emil Lundell, Pablo Alcaba and Kryzik, although those gaps are starting to increase a little bit more as well. So we're still going to be looking at the fight here for the top eight. We're going to look at Justin Chevalier now, who's starting to get closer to Tim Turnamo. Uh, but aside from that... Alberto Bowser's fight with Kevin West in the fight for top three. There's not much more to report. We have five laps remaining, but the heat is going to intensify in a moment when we're approaching the final few laps. Yeah, Pablo actually um, pushing Emil quite a bit, make, making him use ERS. But of course, he has managed to hold on to that lead, which is quite impressive, of course. But his pace on this track is just so incredible, so, and it is showing. He has uh, held the lead of the race for most laps this race, which, which is great, and he definitely will be happy about that, um, especially for his championship. As Justin goes side by side with Tim, will he be able to make the position? No, he won't, as Tim ends up in front of him. And that was a very late minute dive by Justin Chevalier, but it looks like he's got the better run down the start finish straight. And he does overtake Tim Tornemo here, although Tim tries to stay around him. So if he overshoots just a little bit, Tim can sneak back down the inside. But it looks like he's going to keep that P9 for the time being. So that dive around the hairpin did work out for him. On the other hand, it's allowing Charles Sutton to get a little bit of a break away from him. Kryzix has now also fallen outside the DRS window of Pablo Alcaba and Mil Lundell. So it looks like the fight uh, for uh, the race win is going to be a two-man race. As Alberto Barros, Emil's teammate, still finds himself half a second down to Kevin West. 
I really should be keeping an eye on the top two, although Kryzik is trying to get back within DRS range. I'm not sure if he's going to have DRS now down the start for, uh, down the back straight. If he does, he's still going to stay within the five, but if he doesn't, then that is likely it for him. And seeing how much the time like he increases, goes. he's not. So the fight for the race went down to just two players, two drivers. That's Emil Lundell and Pablo Alcaba. Yeah, it is very nice to see Pablo pushing Anno, um, not letting him have it that easy. As, um, he has DRS now, but he hasn't managed to make many attempts for an overtake in this time that he's been behind him. As Tim um, and Justin have been fighting, but Tim does end up in front, um, just having the better speed in that straight line. <coughs> As Alberto is still chasing down Kevin, but uh, it doesn't seem like he can do it. As um, Killian goes ahead of Luke Mills at the back of the grid. Uh, Justin now finally gets ahead of Tim, and um, Nico notices that and tries to take advantage, but he does not manage. Yeah, he just doesn't manage there. There was a little bit of wheel banging between Justin Chevalier and Til Tim Turnamel but it didn't look like that was going to mount in any sort of incident. So well done by Justin, but it's also given Charles Sutton a little bit of breathing room. They're falling outside the RS range, so now the fight for P9 is on with Justin, Tim, Nico, and Guti. Anthony Bergignon still staying outside of the RS window, so won't be fighting for that. But we are now going to move up to the race lead because that is where the real fight is going to be happening tonight. Emil Lundell, Pablo Alcaba, gap just within two tens as Pablo has decided to just stay behind for a moment's notice, but both drivers having fairly high levels of ERS, so they will be fighting it out in the final few laps, and as they come around lap or uh, turn to, uh, 16, they're now going to enter lap 26, there's just three laps to go, but the fight is on between Emil and Pablo. Yeah, Pablo having that DRS, he is trying his best, but he just can't make an attempt for an overtake. Um, I believe he will eventually get a chance and he will try to take it, especially now it being the final two laps. Um, he will be doing his best wanting to take home that race win, but of course against Emil with this pace it will be very difficult. Um, as Nico is definitely still looking for at least P10 as a point starting from almost last, being last minute. Will definitely be impressive and of course him being a reserve driver. He will want to put his name onto the standings if it is not there already. I'm not actually quite sure on the standings. Oh, and there's contact. Just as you say that there's contact between Nico Viani and Tim Turnemo. I'm not sure if Nico got touched there, but it looked like he had spun out already before even making the overtake onto Tim Turnemo. Maybe there was a little bit of contact with Guti Balins. Anthony Bergignon says thank you and he moves away as Tim Tornemo now bumps into Nicky Viani. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but the drivers finding each other for a second time here around this lap. So them two definitely falling out of contention for the points here now. Anthony Bergignon still too far away. Guti Balins can still have a fight uh, with Justin Chevalli for P9. But the fights there are starting to ease down a little bit. Alberto Barrels then, he is going to dive it around the inside of Kevin West. And down the hairpin he goes. Goes for the overtake and secures that. Puts that Alpine back onto P6. But now we're going to focus our eyes for the remainder of the race. Between the top two, Emil Lundell, Pablo Alcaba, lap 27 of 28. Just two laps remaining and it's all to play for. Who do you think is going to win the race here tonight, uh, Honestly, I think even with that one lap advantage of tyres, Emil probably does have the edge, especially with his pace. Um, he has managed to get into the lead and, you know, uh, on any track, even one lap can make quite a difference. Um, as Tim Tornamo gets a five second penalty uh, for speeding in the pit lane. But, um, yeah, Pablo... Um, Definitely will be trying his best, of course, to get that race win. But with that edge Emil has, tyres plus his pace, um, it definitely will be very difficult. Uh, but my prediction is that Emil will be able to take it home. 
Well, it's all going to be down to how the ERS play is going to come into action. Pavlovka definitely needs to be a lot closer on the back straight in the next lap than the 710s that it was just uh, before. As Charles Sutton, Justin Chevalier, Guti Balland has mo have moved within uh, range of each other just now. And that gap now being also close. So them three really fighting for the final couple of points. And Charles likely going to be overtaken now by Justin Chevalier. Justin has now gone past. Guti Balland might do the same thing. They're almost three man. And Guti around the outside has gotten... Almost one dispatched. It's going to stay around the outside. Does he have enough of an exit speed to get past the Red Bull driver? He does. So Guti finds himself into P9 now. Justin Chevalier has moved up into 8. Kevin West is still close to Alberto Barros. But up ahead in the final lap, Pablo Alcaba is really zoning in about behind Emil Lundell. Now the gap three tens. And let's stay on board with Pablo for the remainder of this race. Yeah, such a devastating race for a couple of drivers, five of them having DNF, including our championship leader. And with Emil in the lead of the race, and even if he does not manage to keep that, which personally I think he will, that will knock Lucas down and it will be unfortunate for him having DNF from an incident which I'm not sure was his fault, but we will definitely see after the race what he has to say if he does attend the first race interview. Yeah, well, we'll see if they are going to mention anything in the Discord chat. But in the meantime, we're seeing Pablo Alcaba move in behind Emil Lundell. It will need to be a last-minute lunge. It will need to be a last-minute lunge. He goes for the move, slides a little bit, avoids contact with Emil Lundell. Quite impressive he managed to do so. But Emil Lundell keeps the lead. And round the final corner they go. Pablo almost bidding it there as well. But it's a race win for Emil Lundell. Second go into Pablo Alcaba. A third final place on the podium, a very clean race for Karizic. Tony Hitala also getting a good race result. But Lewis Walker, really the hero here of the race, from P20 to P5. And now we have the final few drivers. Alberto Barros coming through. Justin Chevalier has retired. I'm not sure if he's going to come through in the standings because that's does, that does change the results a little bit. He was ahead of Goody Ballin, Machi Lutinsky, and Anthony Bergignol. And we see Charles Sutton, Nico Viani. Uh, Killian Rachik and Luke Mills also come across the line now. At least two of them still have to come across it. Um, but we had some pretty good fights up ahead. And indeed, as you mentioned, Emil manages to keep it. And he is going to take over that championship lead where really three races ago, he wasn't even all that close towards the front of the standings. But winning the last race, winning this race, that almost secures half of his points for the entire championship... And he's now suddenly our championship leader. That's really impressive. Yeah, it, it's very impressive. Shanghai clearly being a very good track for Emil. And um, Mache, actually, with um, having a bit of the, an upset at the start of the race, definitely being quite lucky that quite a few of the drivers have DNF'd. He does manage to get a punt on the board. Um, his misfortune being, you know, slightly faded by that. But it is incredible what some of the drivers did today. What most of the drivers did today. Lewis Walker finishing in P5 um, while starting from the very back of the grid. That is extremely impressive. And, you know, watching that fight last few turns between Emil and Pablo, that was just incredible. Emil knowing he had to defend with his life if he wanted to keep that win and make his championship lead ahead of Lucas as high as he could. And it is just incredible to see, and the anticipation was just great. It really was. And yeah, if we look at the full race results, then Emil Ondel takes our provisional race win. Second going to Pablo Alcaba. Then it's Kryzik's Tony Itala, Lewis Walker in P5, as you mentioned. Berto Barros in P6, ahead of Kevin West. And then it's Guti Ballard, Machi Lutinsky, and Anthony Bourguignon. Although I'm very curious to see where, uh, let's see, Justin Chevalier is going to come out on because... He does finish as a lap down, although I'm pretty sure he was ahead uh, slightly. Oh, he was close to Guti Balance, so maybe he will retake that 8th place. But yeah, as you mentioned, you were very surprised that Machi Lutinsky still took points. He was surprised himself in the Discord chat as well, so he's very happy about that. But some good results all the way through, and it shows that for the drivers that didn't give up at the start of the race, that they were still able to do it. 
but definitely the driver that had the most to gain tonight did gain the most, and that is Emil Lundell. Yeah, that is true. He definitely will be very happy about that result. Um, Lucas definitely being a bit upset, but in the following races, um, which, how many is there after this? There is three more races to go, so we'll be going to Austria next week. Then we have a race in the States, and our final race in three weeks' time will be uh, around the circuit of Interlagos, Brazil. Yeah, so Lucas, with those few races, now at a disadvantage and quite a significant one now, which will be about uh, 18 points, I yep. believe. Um, he will have to try very hard, and especially with Emil's pace around uh, basically every circuit we've seen, it's great. So Lucas will have to fight very hard if he wants to keep that. And it's going to be a very tough one for him indeed, but also Julian 28, he will at least keep that shared second place now with Lucas Beisner as he remains scoreless. It's the first race where Lucas Beisner actually didn't score any points. He's got eight points to his name, so that's a sixth place, a fourth place, three third places, and a second place. So he's yet to win a race here this season. Melandel's picked up his third race win of the season's fourth podium with one time a second place, one's also sixth. Um, did not participate in Azerbaijan and DNF'd in Canada race five, uh, but he does find himself ahead of the championship standings. The other race wins, two of them going to uh, Julian 28, one to Tony Hitala round two in Saudi Arabia, and one to Lewis Walker, which was around uh, the Montreal circuit that we casted before together uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we're currently trying to see if we can get any of the drivers for an interview it looks like Emil Lundell says he's good so I'm not sure if we're going to see uh, any more drivers drop in uh, but definitely a big upset when it comes to the championship standings and with Tony Hitala now picking up this many points he's going to pick up 18 points that will move him on to 67 points he's starting to come a little bit closer towards Lucas Beisner and Julian 28 but it does look like the fight is starting to turn into the favor of Emil Lundell's as he's now got a pretty hefty championship lead if the result stays as is. Yeah, so it was very interesting to watch. And now the standings have been changed out the front quite a bit, looking more promising for Lucas for the start of the race. But of course, mistakes happen and it is definitely um, definitely will be interesting to find out what actually happened is I don't believe either of us actually um, managed to see properly what happened there, which is unfortunate as, of course, an incident for the championship leader like that is devastating, ending in the DNF. But, of course, Emil definitely will be happy about that, just showing his pace, just making the name for himself, and it, it is very good to see. It is very good to see indeed, and... He's picked up now his third race win of the season. That also means that he's got the most race wins of any driver out there this season, which is also good news for him. And he is definitely going to make a good bid for the championship win at the end. But next week, we're going to go to Austria. That is where the drivers usually keep it quite close. We do know uh, from other series that Emil is quite quick there, as I've seen him around there. Although I would expect Lucas Beisner to get very close to him once again. Julian 28 has been very strong all the way throughout the season. In the six races he did participate, he picked up three uh, pole positions. So definitely a driver to watch out uh, for as well. And hopefully he will be back next week. Uh, as it stands for uh, stands now, it looks like we're not going to see any interviews uh, later on tonight. So I think we'll be able to uh, round off the stream for tonight and go to some closing words. Um, yeah, I think so. It's been uh, an extremely great race, and I'm obviously very glad I could help commentate it. Uh, it was a very interesting watch, very good battles, and just very clean racing, which was amazing to see. It was a very clean racing indeed. We've only seen a handful of incidents, very small incidents as well. The main incident, of course, that we caught was with Nico Viani, uh, and I believe that was uh, Tim, who we saw as well. So them two did have a little bit of a tussle. They came together twice in the final few uh, laps, which we, of course, saw happen on stream. But aside from that, 
very clean racing and hopefully not too much to report that is going to change the results uh, uh, significantly. But yeah, next week, where this race, we really didn't have many track limit violations. I think we only got one and that's for a driver who retired. Um, but next week around Austria, that's going to be very different, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. Austria is a horrible track for track limits and they definitely will be picking them up like it's money. They definitely will. Well, then it sounds like we're going to round it off then for tonight. This was WRPC Tier 4 here on April 8th as we had our Round 7 race in China around the Shanghai International Circuit with Emil Lundell taking the race win and also taking the lead in the championship standings. Next week, we'll be back the same time, 8 p.m. British time or 9 p.m. Central European Summer Time for Round 8 out of 10. We're going to Austria then. Have a good night, everyone, and see you then. Good night.